magnetic personality <laughs> has a lot of value. Um, and the chance to discuss it with the author, but even Stephen so um, I think that's all. But I think I mean, one of the uh, indicators in terms of, kind of like the course learning cycle would apply to managers is the kind of activists don't like to be caught reading. You know, if they're sitting in their office reading a book and somebody comes in and catches them at it. It's as though they were looking at a pornographic magazine or something. Not, not a dumb thing to do. Going, going to a talk or talking to well, is, is more active? Mm, that's a good question, yeah. Well, I suppose it's more an opportunity to network and it's often a bit of a, a, bit of a treat. So, I mean, often management development, you, you know the hotel called the Belfry towards the bottom of the... Uh, M5 toll road. Anyway, so it's, a, it's a big posh hotel with loads of conference facilities and a golf course and a bar, of course, and all the rest of it. Um, but it's amazing how many management centres, all the, all the hotels that host such, such a have extensive leisure resorts. Uh, and so, I mean, is, is leadership development, um, management development really a kind of um, capability enhancing exercise or is it part of the reward package? Um, it usually comes out of recurrent expenses rather than as to, um, you know, kind of, it rarely goes on the balance sheet as an investment, you know, not like football players for example, with a few rare exceptions. Managers aren't transferred like um, Owen or whatever the star footballers are, millions mm -hmm. of pounds, with the occasional exception I'm sure. Um, well then again I do some research on kind of the three three actual benefits of, of leadership development programmes are in no particular order just standing back from work and thinking about it a bit, be networking with other people and seeing um, hearing the old model that might help you think about the world. For example, Porter's Five Forces is probably top of the pops in terms of that, that kind of thing. So the golf course you could say what well, it is, it's networking opportunity, isn't it? Probably a bit gendered, but not entirely. Not as bad as Finland, where I was once. Um, the, my colleague Vivian Hodgson, and the, towards the end of the day, the Finnish host, a chap inevitably said, Time for sauna. <laughs> and off we go, leaving Vivian at the door. <laughs> um, <laughs> how did we get into that? <laughs> well, just the, the value of whatever. Of, Oh yes, yes, networking and um, yeah, I'm trying to what came before that, yeah, yeah. Um, and most most organisations spend a great proportion of their leadership development budget by a long way on senior managers and their successors. Uh, that's a, as we found it in a study of up to a dozen um, corporations. The one exception in that study was Bernardo's. A charity. Um, Bernardo's only has one children's home left on the expenditure side and spends the rest of its time doing child related uh, projects. But the pinch point in that business model is, is not there, it's on the money generating side. And on all those uh, high street charity shops, which are largely or entirely staffed by volunteers. Yeah. So the leadership of the charity stops on the high street, I think they're both the most problematical. And uh, taken collectively, the most important from resource point of view. So their leadership development money goes to a large extent on, um, on uh, leadership development. Now, of course, senior management leadership costs a lot more. That's you know, a trip to Harvard or whatever. Uh, whereas leadership development for the other ranks is probably a lot cheaper. So um, the health service and the programme called Leadership at the Point of Care. Uh, I think they put 150,000 matrons or the equivalent through it. But I think it was a three day plus one day empowerment based workshop. And although you'd think nurses or even nurse leaders, matrons, jobs are quite constrained. Um, <coughs> little things like for example, and it sounds trivial, taking patients, visitors and relatives a cup of tea as well as the patient uh, was one of the examples of what some uh, nurse stroke matron did uh, probably almost only her own initiative. Um, uh, 
But if 150,000 people do things like that, it probably ends up to something. Yes. And while I think of the health service, of course, virtualization and computer systems is coming, but it's often over budget and underpriced and sometimes doesn't work. And um, the health service is replete of the examples of that, isn't it? Yes. And they're, they're not the only ones. Yeah, so the, the organisations are various. Yeah. But John, we've gone over an hour and seven minutes. How so I think, I think we can stop for a cup of tea. Well, well, that's Any well organised conference. For sure. Or a game of golf. <laughs> or a swim in the lake. Well, a swim in the lake. swim and come around just to show the view. I will. I will just come around. Yes. Which has been a